Okay, honors 11, new unit. Uh, what I would like for you to do is, is place everything that we do with this unit on just one doc, a pages doc, Google doc, it doesn't matter. Just keep adding stuff every day to it and then just send me that PDF every time you need to turn something in. All right, that way we don't have a whole bunch of documents everywhere. Okay, so let me give you a little heads up on you know the, the play itself and the author and other things to kind of put things in perspective. So our author is Oscar Wilde, a uh, super duper famous author from this time period. Technically he's Irish, uh, but um, he was educated uh, in England. Um, and he's known for being uh, really funny. Uh, he pretty much spends all his time and effort making fun of the upper classes uh, of this time period. So we're, 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 we're going back and forth setting wise in London and the countryside they have a country house to so think of you know Mr. Darcy's house or you know Mr. Bingley's rental or anything like that okay and we're pretty much dealing all with the upper class okay so there there are going to be some Marxist things uh, you know we have two two male characters two two female characters so I want you to maybe keep an eye on those traditional gender roles although we're not going to use a bunch of theory you need to keep those those ideas in mind because he pretty much flips everything on its head here um, in this play, uh, which which is pretty hilarious. The the upper class love this play, and he like I said spends almost all his time ripping on them, uh, which is pretty awesome. So we're in the late Victorian age, okay, about eighteen ninety five. The Victorian age was you know eighteen. 36 to 1901 when she died so we're in the very tail end of that and it was a very stuffy time so i've provided some powerpoints for you to kind of scroll through so you can kind of get wrap your head around what what this time in history uh was like but we're about 100 years after jane austen was writing uh pride and prejudice so you know pride and prejudice was not a victorian novel but just came right before it Okay, so, but really nothing has changed, uh, especially with the upper classes. All right, so what I foresee going on here with the scope of this unit is we're going to be looking at some different things. So I thought I'd start off this first assignment by looking at some jokes. Okay, so uh, again, look on the PowerPoint that says Oscar Wilde, and if you scroll down, there'll be... Uh, a couple of slides that give you different kinds of jokes that he uses uh, within this play. Okay, so he uses a lot of kind of tricky, subtle wordplay. So pay attention to that. Things are, are, are opposites or paradoxes and things like that. So scroll through that slide and, and get an idea of what uh, what kind of things he, he does with, with words. Then we'll probably move on to Victorian values which is also on that Victorian PowerPoint uh, that I've uploaded uh, on Google Classroom, okay? Um, and, and like I said, we'll, we'll do that with another reading. And then there's this thing that's called Victorian doubleness. These people led um, kind of dual lives because society was so stuffy and people couldn't really be what they wanted to be. So they had to come up with these elaborate uh, kind of alter egos, so to speak. So you'll see what I mean when, when you start reading today. Um, so I guess just real quick, you know, about, about the characters, we're dealing with Jack slash Ernest. They're the same person. Keep in mind that Ernest is a synonym for serious, and this play is a comedy, okay? So again, he's making fun of all these kind of stuffy things. Uh, related to the upper class and Victorian society in general. Then we have his buddy Algy or Algernon. He's a broke, rich guy. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. Uh, and then we have a couple of ladies. Uh, Cecily is how you say her name. Um, she's the younger woman uh, in the play. Um, and you'll see how she's you know kind of very different from um, some of the ladies that we met in Pride and Prejudice. And then also we have uh, Gwendolyn, okay, Miss Fairfax, and then her mother, Lady Bracknell, as well. Um, and you'll see kind of what's going on between all those. So yeah, keep an eye on Gwendolyn. She's kind of a uh, Lizzie Bennet type character. Um, she's pretty fun, okay. So yeah, your resources. Again, everything is going to be on Google Classroom. 
Hopefully you've noticed I've started to post YouTube videos so that if you have trouble opening up, um, I, I probably, to tell, to tell you the truth, I'm probably not going to post these uh, explain everything uh, projects anymore. I'm just sending them to tech and they're putting them on YouTube. So just use that. If it's not working, let me know or, or talk to them. Okay, so that's, that's where to find those PowerPoints. Hopefully you brought your, your copy of the play home. Uh, if not, let me know or just go online and you can probably find a PDF version of, of the play for free. All right. Okay. So your assignment is going to be to look for jokes. And there's probably 20, 25 of them in this first reading, in this first 10 pages. So I need you to stop at the very, very, very top of, of page 10. Okay. Um, so yeah, if it cracks you up, go back to this, to the slide and see what kind of joke it matches up with. All right. So I want you to find two jokes and match them up with those rhetorical devices. Okay. Or different kinds of jokes that he uses, uh, copy them, you know, right out of the book and, you know, give me the page number. Uh, you know, I've read this play probably, you know, Mm, I don't know, 30, 40 times, so I'm pretty familiar with it, but just give me the page number anyway so I can look back at it real quick and see, you know, see what you're talking about, okay? So then, you know, the best you can in just a couple of sentences, explain to me, you know, what kind of joke it is and why those jokes are funny, okay? So, you know, algae says this, I think, you know, it's this kind of joke, and here's why, based on, you know, the play, the setting, the characters, etc. All right. So again, do the best you can uh, there. I know this is new. So, you know, don't feel like you got to go, you know, hunting the internet to, to go find, uh, you know, hey, is this joke, you know, this kind or this kind? Um, I'd rather you ask me, email me uh, if you have any questions about, uh, about those things, the, the era, the setting, the characters, uh, hopefully like you'll get into this and, and start seeing uh, how he does things here. Okay, so all you need to do is type up those jokes, give me the page numbers, explain them in just a few sentences, tell me what kind of joke it is, and send it as a PDF. Okay, so uh, I, I can assume, uh, like I said, we might do this one more time. Uh, just to give you another crack at it. If not, we'll move on to Victorian values and or doubleness. It just depends on what, what we're going to see in, in the play at that particular uh, reading and assignment. All right. So as always, hang in there. And uh, if you have any issues, email me. Best way to do it. All right. See you guys.